Hi, welcome to Catch Fire London's YouTube channel. We're really glad that you joined us today. We really pray that this message inspires you in your relationship with God. If it's in your heart to sow into our ministry, uh, to help us uh, fund uh, having things like this YouTube channel, having things like our podcast, uh, we'd love you to partner with us. The link is up here in the corner. Um, and you can give any gift, any amount, and anything that you give will help us uh, continue to grow the media department of this church uh, and make sure that we get the message of Jesus uh, as far and wide as we can. So bless you. Uh, and let me just pray for you as you listen to this message. God, I just pray that as, uh, as my friend here listens to this message, God, that you would just open their hearts to something fresh of you, something fresh of the kingdom, that they would be transformed as they encounter your presence through this message. Amen. We have John and Carol with us. <laughs> and, um, and then we're going to let Carol and Chloe are going to um, release some stuff tonight. And so tonight is going to be very different this, to this morning. Um, I had a testimony um, just emailed to me um, about someone who's in the room, but I, I don't know if names are out, so I won't give names. But um, we haven't got much time, so I just want to do this quickly. Um, a woman had a young girl stay with her for a few years, but when it was time for the young girl to go, she refused to go. Long story short, it ended up going to court, and the judge awarded in favor of the young girl, um, and the landlord was ordered to pay £47,000, money she did not have. Someone gave it to her 24 hours later. I think there were less people excited by that than were excited by John and Carol being here, which is weird, but... Um, and here's the deal. The person who paid the money had been put up, as in was, was lodging with this person 20 years previously. That is one of the most dramatic sowing and reaping testimonies that I have had. And, um, and so I just want you to know there is nothing you do in the kingdom that is ever wasted. Nothing. 20 years later, the fruit from that investment didn't just land in the life. It invaded the life and transformed the life. David, can you run up very quickly? And then we're going to get John and Carol up. Do I stand up here? <laughs> um, after that, I don't know if uh, what I have can even match. But I, I just want to exhort you guys because of my experience uh, yesterday. Um, do you know the power of the testimony you have? Because if God has touched your life, just share it because it changes other lives. And uh, yesterday, I had to go for an open day at school. And we had to be there at quarter to nine. Got there only to be told, well, you've got to wait around until 9.50 for um, the first tour to take the parents around. I thought, what am I going to do standing around here? in a crowded staff room and uh, most teachers I think are pretty liberal and humanistic and that sort of thing so um, I was sitting there and listening to people complaining about coronavirus and ski trips cancelled and all sorts of nasty things happening and they said to me what do you enjoy so I said what I enjoy is being with the family of God I said when I'm with my friends and family here that's joy to me they said, really? Why? And it was just an open door. And, um, you know, like Stu was telling us last week, make the most of every opportunity. Half the staff room went quiet. And, and I just was able to just pour out. I said, you know, I teach theology. I teach philosophy. But I've met with God. It makes a big difference. And so... And, they, it, it, there were five teachers who were just hanging on every word. It was just so wonderful. At the end of it, one of them came to me and said, where is this church? I, wa I want to go there. So, you know, just keep it up. You know, God can do amazing things just through being open and honest and sharing it like it is. Anyway, yeah. Amen. That's phenomenal. Well, for those of you who don't know, um, Chloe and I first met John and Carol in 2003. Chloe's body was falling apart. She was told she'd be in a wheelchair by the time she was 30. She had epilepsy, up to 12 seizures a day. She was lactose intolerant. She had cystic ovaries and a migraine that lasted over six months up until the point that we met these two. Um, I had probably worst issues um, called arrogance. 
And, um, and we ended up at this conference. I didn't like charismatics, and it was run by John and Carol. Um, Claude was really sensitive about the word father, and um, it was called The Father Loves You. Um, and we ended up at this conference, and Chloe got healed from every disease in her body. Long story short, some of you asked why we planted the church. We couldn't do anything other than God's will after his, his power and love invaded into our lives. And so as Chloe took about 30 seconds to embrace the healing, she's walking up on the steps in Bath City Church. She's giving testimony. I'm back in the congregation thinking, huh, that woman looks like my wife. <laughs> but you can't be Chloe because she just walked upstairs. And Chloe can't do that. Huh, that woman sounds like my wife. It can't be Chloe because she's now kneeling and then standing up and then kneeling and standing up. And the rest is history. That was 2003. And we've had the privilege of calling these guys spiritual parents ever since. I'm going to ask you to stand if you can and welcome John and Carol to the front. privilege it is to be back here. Ah, oh, it's so fun in this place, and the Holy Spirit so loves it. Ah, oh, I just wanted to say hi to you to the, this morning. John will be speaking, but uh, the Holy Spirit and uh, Chloe and I are going to uh, do what I don't know tonight. <laughs> so if you're not busy tonight, come on back, because uh, I think we're going to have some fun. But just the Lord really bless you, and, and uh, I mean, there's so much exciting things going on in the world. There's terrible things going on, but God is on the move, and we're just seeing it everywhere we go, that, that his presence, his healing, his power, his um, calling people to himself. Uh, have you noticed how easy it is to lead somebody in the grocery store to Jesus? You know, you just kind of stand there and uh, you notice they got a limp and can I pray for you? And they think you're going to pray for them when you're on your way home and you're, you know, or in your church and your knees and uh, they get healed. And uh, so you say, Jesus, that was Jesus on the outside. Would you like him on the inside? You know, and they say, is he that nice? Yeah, he's really that nice. And, you know, not all like, that gentleman that shared, it's just like, come on, people are hungry. They're looking for the real thing. And, ah, yeah, there you are. And, um, and, and they're open. You know, you don't have to get religious about it or whatever, but just, you know, take, seize the opportunity. To take the minute to uh, uh, stop for the one because they're all out there and, and they're discouraged and they've, seen all the bad news, and they need to hear the good news. Bless you. It's wonderful to be here. Sorry. I just forgot, before John speaks, I just want to say regarding coronavirus, um, if you're part of Catch the Fire London family, you'd have received an email um, with a video of me just talking about it. It's on YouTube, so it's not private, but um, we don't do fear. We just don't do fear. We don't do fear because of Brexit. We don't do fear because of crime. We don't do fear because of viruses. But God gave us a brain and a spirit. And so we do do sensible. Unless God says, do the illogical. In which case, we follow God. And so obedience trumps everything. But logic trumps stupid. And here's my desire. I would love to start a, a culture within churches that is so sensible that the government turn around and if, if in a few weeks' time coronavirus has got worse in this country, they're talking about shutting down all gatherings over 100 people. Now, that would include this church, unless we start doing seven services a day or whatever. Um, <laughs> Zach, where are you? <laughs> no. I want the government to look at churches like us and say, oh, if you do it like that, you can carry on meeting. Does that make sense? And so we don't have fear. If God says, hug the person, then hug the person. But don't hug the person because of just stupid. All right? And so we're, we're, we're doing a whole bunch of elbow bruising bumps at the moment because apparently that's a thing. Um, yeah, apparently it is. Yeah. <laughs> 
Unless, of course, you've obeyed their rules, which say if you have a cough or a sneeze, do it into your elbow, in which case then don't elbow bump, because I, I don't know, it's just like rules contradicting each other, left, right and centre. I want us to upgrade our protection of each other, especially those who don't have the same faith that you might have. Is that okay? And so we're going to have massive faith, no fear whatsoever, because perfect love casts out all fear, um, but we're going to increase the, the common sense side as well. I oh, know, common sense, not so common in many places. Um, so we're going to do that, and then we're going to do it together, and hopefully we'll be able to put a good pressure on the government at a time when they are having negative pressure from every single angle where we bless them and we pray for them and we honour them and we respect them and we are an example of how to do it well. Amen? Amen. Do you want to honour? Thank you, Stu. Well, that was good, isn't it? Imagine telling a hugging church you can't hug anymore. Doesn't sound like God at all, does it? No. Not when we have such a priority on love. Actually, you know, we're thinking about this coronavirus, and uh, like everything else, the, the disaster becomes an opportunity. Um, possibly an opportunity to go to heaven sooner. <laughs> But also, an opportunity to gain victory over this thing. And uh, one more thing to believe God for. Yeah? How many want to believe God for victory over that thing? Lord, we just choose to believe that you've got this whole thing in your hand. And we just sanctify the crowd in this room to be immune. We just impart that immunity to you all right now in Jesus' name. And we believe you for health and strength. You know, it's not just a coronavirus. There's a million and one contagious things that everybody's getting, and it just goes on and on and on and on, doesn't it? And we had an opportunity just a few days ago in Harrogate to, to bring healing to that group of people and to, and to launch into a physical healing time. And uh, I'm thinking, this is basically an Anglican crowd. I don't know if they're going to go with my theology on this, but anyway, here goes. And, I, and I'm like, I believe it is the will of God to heal absolutely every one of us of everything. And what do I base that on? I base it on the fact that Jesus healed everybody. And he never did one thing that was out of the will of God. So therefore, it must be God's will to heal everyone. And of course, there's scripture that backs that up, isn't there? Psalm 103, verse 3, he forgives all my iniquities. How many are thankful that all your sins are gone? About a quarter of you, okay. <laughs> Some work to do still. And uh, he... He heals all our diseases, he goes on to say. And so we can, we can lay hold of these things and go through difficulties victoriously. You know, I'd, I'd be the first to admit I haven't been all that good at overcoming something like the common cold. I have testimonies of knee healings and shoulder healings and this, that, and the other kind of healing, but uh, not so much the common cold unless I help it along with various and sundry different treatments of one kind or another. But they're going to come up with something for this one too because it's close. Israel said they're about two weeks away from a cure and uh, others are hopeful as well. So yeah, don't get under the fear of it, but use it as an opportunity. Because why, why people are so afraid is that they don't, they don't have a, a purpose in life. Why am I here? I don't know. What am I, to, what am I doing? What am I called to do? I don't know. Where am I going? Where will I spend eternity? I don't even know if there is an eternity. Isn't it amazing? 
that people can go through life, which is very short, incidentally, and not even think about what's coming next. So what's coming next? Once you come out of this body of yours, what then? Paul said, absent from the body, present with the Lord. And uh, I was happy to be able to tell a whole group of Catholics that just two weeks ago when I was with a, a bunch of Catholic charismatic leaders in Augusta, Georgia, and man, they were hungry for the Holy Spirit. But I'm telling them uh, about purpose in life and about virus and death and all that kind of stuff. And life is very short. I think you need to be about 50 years of age before you figure that out. Is anybody here over 50, 50 plus? Yeah, there's a few of us. OK. Well, re remind the others that life is short. Will you do that? Because. Because when you're 20-something, you think you've got eternity ahead of you. And then you turn around a couple of times, and the next thing you know, you're 50, 60, 70. And, you, and you're wondering, how did I get here? But see, this life is getting you ready for the, for the next life. You know, um, my granddaughter Jessica was just reading me this little blurb, or it was sort of like a poem, uh, an anecdotal story of two twins in their mother's womb having a conversation. And the one twin says to another, do you believe in mother? And uh, he said, of course not. There's no evidence of that. And the one says, well, I feel like she's all around us. And, uh, you know, it just went on with that. I, I wish I had it. I could have read it to you. But it is so fitting to a culture that has abandoned God and gone their own philosophical way. And then when, when these kinds of plagues come along, they really don't have any answer to fall back on. But I want you to know you are safe in the arms of Jesus. <laughs> Carol and I just read a book entitled Consider Heaven. Imagine heaven. Thank you. <laughs> Imagine heaven. I get it right. It was a great book, and it was a theologian who digested about 1,500 stories of near-death experiences where people who had died during surgery or something but then had been resuscitated. And they, they seemed to for the most part, had about 12 features to what they had. Uh, not all 12, but they would have like four or five of the 12. And uh, he matched it all up with scripture to point out how biblical all this is. So many of them would meet a man in light, a figure in light who would talk to them, and he's emanating only love to them, such love that they didn't want to leave the place. And when they got a life review, there was no condemnation. There was shame on their part, but there was no condemnation coming from him. And he's connecting all of this to Scripture. And then he selected only prominent people such as psychiatrists, psychologists, medical doctors, so on and so on, who had something to lose by sharing a testimony like that. So in other words, if you're a brain surgeon and you're on and on about your near-death experience, uh, there's a chance that people are going to not want you to operate on them after that because this guy's weird. You see what I mean? So they had something to lose, but yet all of them totally would do it. And uh, then he made the statement that actually about one person in 25 
on average, has had a near-death experience. And it was like, that many? Who knew that? And why would it be that we don't hear more about it then? Do you know why? People think, you will think they're crazy if they share their story. Say, hey, I've come out of my body and I visited the other side and I live to tell about it because I came back into my body. <laughs> and as we read this book, I'm like, Carol, Steve Shogren is in this book. Steve Shogren is a friend from years ago. He pastored the Cincinnati Vineyard. It was a hugely successful church of, I think, about 3,000 people. And he pioneered something he called servant evangelism. And so they were always helping people, serving people, you know, handing out water on a hot day. Or he would put up a sign, free car, oh, free car wash. Or sometimes they'd say, car wash, one dollar. And so people were like, yeah, for a dollar, I'll get my car washed. And all these happy Christians would wash their car, you know. And then he'd roll down his window to say thank you, and they'd hand him the dollar. And it was all this kind of stuff, servant evangelism. And so Steve was this very fit, very athletic, very successful, very smart, very Mr. Cool, Mr. Current Culture. I mean, he was, he was the man. And he went into a hospital for a routine gallbladder surgery, and everything went weirdly wrong. He remembers them counting him down for the anesthetic to take hold. 10, 9, 8. He woke up on the ceiling of the operating theater, looking down. It took him a moment to work out that, I think this is my surgery. I think they're working on me. Have I died? Like, what's going on? And then the voice of the Lord came to him. I don't recall if he saw him. I think he was just hearing him. He, heard, he saw someone. And um, you would think that the Lord would say, don't worry, Steve, we got this. You know, we're, you're good. But the Lord says, Steve, tell me about love. How did you get on with loving? How were you at loving me? So he answered, oh, I love you, Lord. How are you at loving your wife, Janie? Oh, I love my wife, Janie. How are you with loving your children, your two girls? I think there was two. He said, I love my children. And then came. How can you say you love your children when you cannot even name to me, for me, one of their friends? And he's like, oh, dear. It was all about me, wasn't it? Yeah. And so there was struggle that went on. He had, um, had a heck of a time. They had accidentally cut into his aorta twice, and his blood pressure went to zero, and the surgeons didn't know what was wrong. And in the fuss, they also damaged his spinal cord. And he's septic and all kinds of things. And uh, he's rushed to the main hospital, the teaching hospital, and they managed barely to save his life. But he spent the next 12 months in a wheelchair um, with a bag coloscopy on his side. And his life as super pastor came to a screeching halt. And um, I'm like, oh my gosh. I went to Amazon, I bought 
his two other books. One was My Death and Dying, or whatever it was called, and the other was 10 Things I Learned from My Near-Death Experience. And uh, then I read those books, and I called him up, said, Steve, it's John Arnott. We haven't talked in years, but I just read your books, and I, re I read the story in that Imagine Heaven book, and man, you, you came through it w with tremendous victory. And he's telling me how, he said, John, God rescued me from a very self-centered, arrogant, self-sufficient person and taught me how to love and how to walk in humility. It just moved me, the whole story. Because, see, we go around preaching love and preaching forgiveness and... Uh, and oh yeah, the power of the Holy Spirit that we all love. But see, he, he's leading us somewhere. And you need to understand, he is leading us into Christ-likeness in our personal walk with him. And you've only got a few short years to learn it. Hopefully 70 plus. I'm in the plus now. So it's good. But I don't think I've learned all there is to learn about humility and about trusting God and about loving. I mean, I want to be a lifelong learner with all that stuff. But I know one thing. It's the, the Holy Spirit, our friend, who will take us by the hand and teach us these things if you open your heart to him and if you're teachable. Because you'll, you're going to be in life surrounded by people who are only too happy to hurt you and betray you and do all kinds of things. You would think, well, Steve probably sued them for several million dollars. And, uh, and so at least he had all that sorted. No, even that didn't work. Because the hospital was this podunk little hospital and they had no money. And what little he did get, uh, he ventured out with a new church plant and proceeded to lose it all. So God was on his case. Okay, Mr. Hotshot, let's go to school. <sighs> you know, there is an easier way. Follow Jesus. Follow him in prayer. Follow him in humility. Learn to wash the feet of one another. And, uh, and let's get this part right. You know why? Because we're about to head into the greatest move of the Holy Spirit the world has ever seen. When, when I was here, I th not quite a year ago, it was June or May or what month was it? Yeah. And, uh, and we had a really great time. And I remember, I think we showed you David Bruce's prophetic word that if you think this is it, this is not it, you've seen nothing yet. I'm just raising up a plant and blowing the seed of it to the ends of the earth. And that seed will grow and mature, and it'll become the greatest harvest the world has ever seen. And he kept yelling, you have seen nothing. Yeah. You've seen nothing. You've seen nothing yet. I thought, my gosh, this is nothing. What on earth is coming? <laughs> yeah. We're in for some really, really good days. But I'm just somewhat bemused at the mounting pressure that is bringing it all about. It's almost like the security of the uh, secularist is being ripped from beneath his feet. And now there's all kinds of problems, the latest of which is coronavirus, but climate change and 
and uh, Brexit and this and that and economy and ecology and it just on and on it goes. And it's the pressure of the Lord because I totally believe we're in the end times when the kingdom of God is about to be revealed. Are you looking forward to the return of Jesus? Yes. You know what I would prefer is if he came before I died. Because <laughs> death can be painful, I understand, you know. But, but the great catching up, the... Uh, the, the catching up of the Lord coming for his bride, that sounds like a, an amazing, eventful day. And I like to consider it often because it's so preposterous and so completely beyond anything. But I want you to imagine a day when suddenly the dead in Christ rise first and then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up, the Greek is harpazo, to meet the Lord in the air, snatched in English, to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. And so why are we here? Well, we're here to live for him and learn to be like him. Um, where are we going? We're going to be with him. He's gone to prepare a place for us. And how do we get there? Through Jesus Christ, by the Holy Spirit. It's not self-effort, really. Although you do get to decide. And it may be there are people here who have never decided to go for it with Jesus. You know, that'll cost you your dignity a little bit, and it'll have you sort of move into humility a little bit because it goes like this, God be merciful to me, a sinner. I've blown it here and there, and I've done things wrong. I admit it. People struggle with admitting it when they're wrong. Did you know that? But that's the cost. It doesn't cost you any money just a little bit of humility, and he can completely forgive your sins. That is why Jesus died. And Jesus had to be everything he claimed to be because if he was merely a good teacher, uh, he can't really die for anybody except perhaps one other person. You know, he, uh, he exchanged... Barabbas went free, and Jesus died on the cross. Okay, but it's more than that. He paid the debt for the entire world. God so loved the world, he gave his son. So see, he has to be the son of God. He can't be just a good person, just a good teacher, just a good prophet, or even an angel, or an archangel, or any of that, because none of them uh, are worth the life of the entire human race except him. So therefore, he had to be virgin born because God was his father. And it, it, the, the whole Bible, if, if, you can, if you can take away the divinity of Christ, the whole thing falls apart like a house of cards. But you cannot take away the divinity of Christ. And you know what he's done? He's taught us all this, pointed the way to heaven, pointed the way to the Father, and then said, I'm leaving, but I am sending my Holy Spirit to you. And he's going to be with you and in you forever. Isn't that great? And so not only do we have a salvation experience, but we have an experience of being baptized, immersed in God the Holy Spirit. And people speak in tongues, but, you know, it's, it's so much bigger than that. It's so much bigger than a gift that is given at the moment. It is a lifestyle of walking with the king in the kingdom 
by the power of the Holy Spirit. And so that's why miracles happen today, because that presence comes, that anointing comes. That's why salvation happens when you share with someone at work or at school or wherever you are. It's because the anointing and presence of the Holy Spirit is there. And friends, this is, this is taking us into a reality that's even more real than our current reality right here. I hope you're excited about it. Tell somebody next to you, I'm excited about it, will you? Tell your faces. Be sure to tell your faces because I'm excited. Oh, my gosh, I'm excited. One of these days, you are going to see him face to face. That, that little book on Imagine Heaven, that will help you reorientate your perspective a little bit. I highly recommend it. It's written by John Burke. Burke. <laughs> and uh, he's a good theologian. It's a good book. But you get your, get your heart set on your destination here, where we're going. Meanwhile, we occupy and do business until he comes. And so that's why we're forever saying to people, have another drink. Get refilled with the Holy Spirit. Get more and more and more of him. And I can hardly wait for the day you run and jump out of this wheelchair, my dear. Shabbat. It's not far off. Not far off. Why are you in, the, in this chair? Spinal shock. 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 What shocked you, may I ask? Um, I had major spinal surgery and my body just couldn't cope with it. And it left you paralyzed in, the, in your nerves? Some or? of it's come back, but a lot of nerves have been damaged through other things that's gone with it as well. So it's a mixed thing. You know, it's I'm just sorry. not right, is it? <laughs> no. Give me your hand. <laughs> Lord, the doctors did their best, I'm sure. They tried with my friend Steve as well. And it all went wrong, and he had to forgive them. And so we forgive these doctors here as well, right? They were broken hearted. I'm sure they were. They did their best, and it wasn't good enough. There was still nerve damage, and spinal surgery, as you all know, is very tedious. But nothing is too tedious for you, Lord Jesus. I ask you to flow into this spine. I lift the shock and the trauma off of this surgery and this particular point in her spine. And all of those nerves that were damaged, Lord, we collect them and we call them back together and I, I break the trauma off of them and I ask them to regrow normal and let feelings return and let movement return. Let healing flow. And Jesus, we know that if you were in this room praying for her right now, she'd be running around the room by now. Because it is our Father's good pleasure to give us the kingdom. And I believe with you, Lord, that good things starting now will happen in this spine. Now just breathe in the anointing for me. Just by faith, not just air, anointed air, the breath of God. Just breathe it in. We ask that you would bring life to her. Now check yourself and let me know if there's anything going on at all. A lot, of tingling. A lot of tingling. How many know tingling's good? Where's the tingling? All throughout the leg, especially down the back. Is that normal or unusual? I can get it, but it's really been strong today. It's really very strong. As soon as I got in the room. Keep coming, Holy Spirit. 
We love the tingling power of God, don't we? You're really drawing that. Just, Just take another breath again. But I want you in faith to breathe in the breath of God. Not pray, not talk in tongues. Breathe in the breath of God. And put your faith in the anointing, his presence. Increase it, Jesus. Carol, just come and soak her. Carol and Chloe, maybe. Just keep it coming. Something's going on here. Try and move your legs for me before I move on. See if there's any difference. Any? This one, yes? That one's always a strong one. That way, cool. Left one's doing a little better. The right one, nothing yet. But keep that tingling coming. Right. Where was I? We've got about five minutes. (laughs) We need to prepare ourselves for days when people just jump out of wheelchairs for no no reason. Nobody prayed for them. They, They didn't even know what to expect, and something came on them, and that's it. Okay? Because, friends, it's just around the corner. And I'm not saying that to try to hype you up, but to prepare us a little bit for the fact that we're about to get swamped with hundreds and thousands of people who really want to meet Jesus. And the secret for us is the Holy Spirit, okay? So why don't we stand together? Holy Spirit, I feel like we just mentioned you this this morning. But you're actually the one. And I, I ask that you will fall in this room right now and let your glory be manifested to people. Just come upon us, Lord. You're the one who said, if anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. And then out of his inner being, rivers of living water will flow. As you spoke of the spirit that those of us who believe would receive. We want you, Holy Spirit. We want want the realities of God. We don't want just history and tradition and moral principles taught, but We want a supernatural encounter with the living God by the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, Father, visit us today. Let your power flow. Let your power flow. Fire on you. Fire on your hair. Mm. Increase it, Lord God. Let the anointing come. We're your people. And we want this. We totally want more of you. We're not bored with this. It's not old for us. It's fresh and new every morning fire on you Mm. in the name of Jesus kingdom of God keep coming will of God keep falling on your people here breathe them in friends Double. Fire on him. We ask you to keep coming. Fire on you. Burn on us. Let us feel your glory. Fire on this guy right here. And again, Holy Spirit. And again, Holy Spirit. More than he can manage, I pray. You, Rita. 
fire on you, Michael. Mm. Kingdom of God, come, manifest among us. Let your glory fall in this room. Let it go forth from here to the nations. Fill her. Fill him. Yeah. Fire on you. Again. Again. Holy Spirit, this is your church. This is your meeting. We want you to come and glorify Jesus in this place. Glorify him. Let each and every heart know that the Son of God was among us today by the Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Fill this guy up. Increase your anointing. Fill him. Fill. Fill them up. Fill them up. Take it again. More. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're so debilitating when you come upon us. We kind of lose our natural strength sometimes. It helps us with our humility lessons. Father, I pray that all around this room, your abundant mercy will fall on your people. I'm just going to recommend um, parents go get your children, bring them back into the room. John and Carol are going to be moving around. Just in Jesus' name. Releasing an impartation. I just encourage, as John carries on what he's doing, if you're stuck by a wall or in the middle of a row, just make your way out of that place. Make yourself available. And we're just going to continue to allow the Holy Spirit to move through what John and Carol are doing. I'm going to ask some of the ministry team to join in. I'm going to ask some pastors to be by the door. But we're going to continue to just dwell in the presence of God. And this morning was about the Holy Spirit. So find some space, come out of your seats if you want to. Um, but we're going to let, we're just going to ask John and Carol to just keep laying hands on people because as spiritual grandparents of this church, we want everyone to receive an impartation. But we're not lining people up. We're just making ourselves available. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Oh, yeah. Got quite a lot of movement in the legs at the front here, which is why the whooping is happening. Increase it. Let heaven come down. Heaven come down on us, Lord. Yes. Glory on her. If you're new to us, feel free to ask questions of any of the team. We've got pastors and leaders and staff in the room. So if this is new to you and you're new to us, then please, please don't leave without asking questions. We want to make it accessible to every person in the room. Jesus, 
and David and Sandy, David who did the testimony earlier about praying for people in the workplace. Um, there's a newcomer's lunch. If you're new to us and would like to know more about who we are, David and Sandy will be taking a bunch to lunch. Uh, I'm going to ask David, he's over by where the two wheelchairs are at the moment, ask Sandy to join him and then if you've got any questions about lunch then come and just ask them. We're trying to be a family, encountering God's ch- transforming presence and changing the world so we can't do that if we don't know each other. Keep coming, Holy Spirit. Fill your, fill your kids with your glory. Wonderful Jesus, we so want it. We so want it. Thank you for making yourself real among us. We're powerfully touched by the invisible one, God, the Holy Spirit. Jesus. healing this morning just raise your hands high I want us to reach up into that invisible realm of the kingdom like Jesus said The kingdom of heaven is within our reach. The kingdom is at hand. You probably heard me say it before, but it's so powerful. The kingdom is the domain of the king. If there's no king, then it's just dumb. But with him, we have the kingdom. And he fills it with his presence. If I, by the finger of God, the Holy Spirit, cast out demons, well then the kingdom of heaven has come to you. Friends, there's no sickness in heaven. If the kingdom comes to you, your sickness your pain, your difficulties, your troubles, they must leave. So I want you to be just like a little five-year-old kid right now. Just stretch your hands up and reach for the kingdom. Don't analyze it right now. You can analyze it later. But for now, just let's believe God. Lord, you said your kingdom is at hand. Your kingdom is within reach. So grab a hold of it by faith. Take a hold of that truth. Take a hold of that promise. Take a hold of that reality. And bring it down. And place now your own anointed hands on your problem. On your head, on your chest, on your feet, on your knees, your back your hearing, your eyesight, whatever it is, and say this with me. This healing belongs to me because of what Jesus has done. At the whipping and at the cross, he paid for my healing and my salvation. I receive my healing now. In the name of Jesus, breathe it in. Say, I receive it now. 
Thank you, Lord, for healing me now. Now then, I want you to check yourself and do what you could not do a moment ago without pain or difficulty. Just begin to check yourself. Move your shoulders, your fingers, your knees, your hips, your spine, whatever it is. Just check it out. Someone's breathing is being healed right here. You're, you're breathing much better. God is touching your asthma or your breathing problem, whatever it is. I want you to wave your hand excitedly if you feel like we're getting somewhere here. Come on, wave excitedly. Excitedly, like we were in Mexico. All right, if you're waving, run up to the front here real quick, come on. Quickly run up here, come on. Because we wanna pray for you and finish you off. And also we wanna hear what's, what God is doing. Come on, come on, come on. What happened to you, sir? Mine is, I, I have this um, pain, not pain, but feeling here. Yeah. So, it, like a feeling, a um, swelling here. Yeah. So, that's why I came out. A swelling. Is it? Swelling. Internal swelling. Yeah. And has it changed? Ah, I believe so. Yes. I believe so. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for touching him. What's happening to you? Uh, I've been contending for the healing of my throat for three years now, and I feel things loosening up. Fire on him, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. What's Whoa. happening with you? I feel I'm being healed in my, my digestive capacity because after having a hysterectomy, I couldn't digest many types of food. So I'm believing that I've been healed and I can digest any food now. Thank you, Holy Spirit. What's happening to you? I have problems with my kidneys yeah. and my shoulder. So I feel my kidneys might be improving, but I can't tell. How about your shoulder? Oh, uh, it's about the same. Uh, but, uh, Fire on that shoulder in yeah. Jesus' name. How did you injure it? I fell. I fell on the hill. And, uh, Whose fault was it? I it was as if I was pushed. Not by person, but spiritually. All right. So maybe your own fault, I guess. Say, say this, Lord, I forgive myself for not being more careful. Lord, I forgive myself for not being more careful. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Heal my shoulder now. Heal my shoulder now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I break the trauma off that, Lord. Take him all the way back to that injury years ago. Healing comes to it right now in Jesus' name. Check it again. Are we getting anywhere with that? Slightly better. Well, keep going with that because Jesus paid for your healing there. Yeah. Amen. What's happened to you? I believe the Lord is making my eyes whole because um, I have times where uh, maybe I'm in a store or something and people are playing blur. And then after a while, it clears. And it's, and it's not a sickness because I, I, yeah, because I tried to get uh, glasses for it and it didn't work. Fire on him, Fire on him. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to keep this room a bit quieter. If you want to fellowship, then we're going to invite you to go to the next room. That would be amazing. God is healing people in the room, so if you have sickness in your body, then I want you to do exactly what John just asked you to do, but do it again. Reach up into the atmosphere of God and grab a hold of the anointing of Jesus Christ of Nazareth and then lay it onto your sickness or your injury. Fire on you. Well, we've got testimonies here, and so t upgrade your faith. My, my back has been faithful, but as you we were praying, I felt my back stretching. Then I've, I've been having to stand on my side. Do it again. Just do it again. You can do it. Fire on her. Fire on her. What happened to you, sweetie? Um, I have um, a flu. 
You what? Flu. I've got a flu at the moment. Uh huh. And but now? It's just, um, I feel like it's going. Yeah. A yeah. Good. What's happened with you, sweetie? Well, I had her now, and it's like a round ball, but it's gone. It's like a, like a little It's bump. gone. Yeah. So what like was a, it you had? It's like a round hernia. A hernia. So your hernia is gone. Do you know, that takes a miracle. It takes a miracle to... This lady had a hernia that's now gone, friends. And there's many other things here. We'll keep going. But listen, just before we let you go, I want to say one more thing. It may be that you're here and you have never totally surrendered your life to Jesus. And people hold back for a number of reasons. They just don't know, or they're suspicious, or they've watched other Christians and they're getting, oh, I don't know. But I'm telling you, he's the only one who's offering eternal life. And you don't have to work for it. All you have to do is believe. The work of God is this. Believe on the one who the Father has sent. Say, John, what, what does that mean? What do I do? You really acknowledge that Jesus is everything he claimed to be, the Son of God who died in your place and paid your debt. So let's just close our eyes for one moment. Lord, I ask you to come and speak to all of us as your people. And we're deeply grateful that you were willing to die on the cross for us and pay our debt that we could not pay, but you paid with your life. You paid the debt for the sins of the entire world and of those who would simply believe in you. So if you're here this morning and you want forgiveness for your sins. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. He will forgive you totally and write your name in the book of life simply by believing. If you would like him in your heart to be your savior, I want you to just quietly admit that to yourself right now. Just to yourself, you say, I would like that. I want Jesus to be mine. I want the Son of God living in me, come into me. I want my sins forgiven. I want a home in heaven. Now then, if you just did that for the first time and you're serious about that, I want you to unashamedly hold your hand up high and say, I, I just asked Jesus to forgive me and come into my life. Is there anyone here? If that's you, hold your hand up unashamed and wave it at me. Say, I, I just did. Are you holding your hands up? Yeah, I, I, I did already. I just gave my life to Jesus before. Right. I'm not really speaking to those who, have, who are currently Christians, but if you've never done it before or if you've fallen away and you want to come back home, then this is a great moment for you. And if that's you, unashamedly raise your hand and say, John, I, I want Jesus in my life. God bless you back there. And if you are responding to this, I'm going to invite you to come on up. 
And let me pray with you. Would that be okay? Come on, sweetie. God bless you. God bless you. All right, the rest of you, um, why don't you turn to your friend and bless them and pray with them, and uh, I'll give it over to Stuart. Well, we're going to be back uh, just before 6 o'clock this evening, and Carol, Chloe, and the Holy Spirit are going to have some fun in the room. Uh, we've got a guest worship leader, Lucy Grimble, as well this evening, so um, we're going to have an amazing evening together. If you are new to us, then please, please, please make sure you say hello to one of the family, one of the leaders, one of the staff team. We want to integrate you into this family. We are trying to grow to be a supernatural family, influencing the whole of London, top to bottom, side to side. One of our ministry team leaders had a word earlier that during ministry, uh, during the worship of ministry, ministry of worship, we were... Uh, there's a lot of people who entered into the secret place, the Holy of Holies, during that worship. And it may have been new for you to go into that level of um, intimacy with God. And I just want to ask if there's anyone in the room who felt that they went into a deeper place with God than they've ever been to before. Then I want to ask you to come forward and speak to one of the team. We are a church that is mandated to disciple people to go deeper into intimacy with God, relationship with the Holy Spirit. We don't want just to see people saved. We want to see people discipled into the depths of who God is. And so if that's you, please, please, please come and see one of the team. We have Sammy by the piano, Sarah and Matsy are there, Tom's here. And everyone's getting very excited by the fact that someone is walking at the front. We really, really want to dive into the kingdom of God together. So please don't leave unless you're connected into this family.